Unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. The helmet looks like the face of an ancient god of war, crying blood. Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshots. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through all the smoke and the panic. With blood gushing from his face, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. The look of vengeance framed in blood, lips shaking. This is the last thing. Here it comes, death. You simply blink, then something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and the pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark, a distant blur as you recede into it. The Hardy Boys are screaming, fighting, dying. Someone jumps over you. Nearby gunfire shatters glass. Stop! The cop! Protect the cop! He's down! Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Stay with me. Yes, keep talking. You hear me? Stay awake. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy and the sounds ever more distant, and a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away, almost gone, when suddenly you sense something behind him, a slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Scream immediately. He's gonna die. No, you say, and hand out your firearm to him. Your hand trembles and your eyes are That's all it takes. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand and fires behind him. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. This is death. One more door, baby. One more. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago.
He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers. Thrashing in his bone sleep. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. There is a radio in the distance. A radio of the world. Plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon we will return to the world. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it. Again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. The engine of a caprice Kanema. No, it was him. He is the infernal engine. Can't you see? He never stops. He only gets wild. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple, from the pain. Sunrise, Arabellon. What happened? You shot the Major in the face. A firefight ensued. Yes. As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He missed, or you dodged. Then I shot and wounded him, while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. Glenn did not survive. Titus, Fat Angus and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. So do Alain and the musician, I forget his name. Yes, he's still alive too. You were bleeding out by then. I think you said something about your wife, and you warned me. I was able to disarm one of them, the pole, before she got a jump on me. I killed her, and that's what happened. This is the one. The pole was the last to die. Everhart had their bodies returned to Cronel for a funeral. The company is yet to retaliate. Because we deterred them? Or Joyce did? Maybe the harbour in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe... Maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack soon. I don't know. 4. Glenn, Theo, Shanky and Angus. The fat one, he took a lot of bullets. All. Yes, officer. Seven people are dead. It's not a success. But what's done is done. The violence is cordoned off. The Hornet did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized. Yet. And we are still alive. Both of us. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary saying. Isn't that written on you? It served you well. The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. I think we may have held it off, for now. Barely. That's right. Ouch, indeed. Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your thigh. The outer side, thankfully, no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrom. We will see. 
Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming, stupid of me. Easy now. How are you? He nods. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. Two days, in and out. You've been up enough to take Droamin and curse. And drink water. Yes. The joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. The close proximity of death must have made the lieutenant contemplate his life choices. He's done with the jacket. I honestly don't know. Do you? Because we can't talk to Everhart. The harbour is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of wild pines, or oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone, and Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Oh yes, she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. I asked Mr. Gart. Turns out it was a bad idea not to arrest her, but maybe it was a good deed. It will pay off in heaven. Who would have figured? By the way, the lieutenant does not actually believe you will be spiritually reimbursed for letting her escape. You just... I don't know. I think the theory you presented, it's someone else outside our circle of suspects, was right. It better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. What? Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to keep everything. He's wrong. Okay. He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. I'm listening. We should go upstairs, rethink the ballistics in situ. I agree with this. What else? Absolutely. There's no other way to go about it. We screwed up. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Ravachol is full of them. He does not know what to reply. Looks out of the window. Then back at you. It's morning outside, you think. I'm afraid we may not be able to locate communism, detective, on account of it being dead. A nod. I'm ready to hear what you think about solving crimes now. It really is very hard. That concussion must be making him dizzy. No. Are you ready to limp? Good. Where do you want to limp to? The lieutenant did mention doing more ballistics. Also, it's just close enough to endure the walk. Why not? Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better.
The bathroom mirror has been wiped completely clean. You see the reflection of your face in the mirror, such as it is. A regular, clean-shaven police officer.